welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a review video on the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette. So if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts on the palette, just keep watching. Also, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe down below. I usually upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me. I personally love to do review videos and unboxing videos and like swatch videos, you know, your typical YouTube channel. So yeah, if you enjoy those types of videos, definitely go ahead and subscribe down below and check out some of my other videos as well. They will be linked in the description box at the end of this video as well as on the side whichever side you should see some of my other videos so if you're interested in those check them out but without further delay let's get into my review of the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette now you guys I know there are a lot of diehard Kat Von D fans out there I'm definitely not one of them I feel like I've always kind of kept up with their brand and bought a few things here and there but I'm definitely not like a Kat Von D collector not like a huge supporter of her brand or anything like that I do love her everlasting liquid lipsticks I'm actually wearing the shade Lolita on my lips right now in case any of you guys are wondering that's like my go-to nude shade and if you are as tan as me I would totally recommend picking that up because I swear it's like a universally flattering shade for tan girls so that's my little tip on that but as far as Kat Von D goes, I bought a few things here and there, nothing major. But when this palette came out, I was definitely conflicted. I just didn't know if I was going to buy it or not. At first, I was like, hmm, no, I wasn't. But then I kept thinking of the Ghost of Christmas Past, which was the Mi Vida Loca palette. I definitely regret not picking up that palette because I've heard nothing but good things about it. I'm coming to terms with that bad decision. Um, as time goes by, I'm like, okay, well, you know, it is what it is. I've never got it. It's fine. We'll all move on. But then I picked up last year's palette, which was the Metal Matte palette, and now I have the Saint and Sinner palette. These are all by the brand Kat Von D, in case you didn't catch that. And I would say her holiday palettes are definitely on the high end. This is about $62, which I think is a little bit more than the average price of an eyeshadow palette. I usually like to stick in the $40 range when it comes to my eyeshadow palette purchases. And so yeah, I think it's definitely a little bit high end. Background on the brand, in case you guys didn't know, Kat Von D is a tattoo artist. She also has a TV show about being a tattoo artist and is co-owner of High Voltage Tattoo. That's kind of how I knew who she was. Before her makeup line, I used to watch her TV show, which I thought was really cool. She's definitely very edgy, very rock and roll. She has great design artistry, of course, because she does design all of her palettes packaging which I think is a beautiful touch it's not something a lot of other brand owners can say for themselves her packaging is very very unique like I said previously I have bought from the brand quite a little bit and this I picked up from the sephora.com website I do like to pick things up from Kat Von D's website but she doesn't do free shipping so generally I think I bought like one thing on her website and that was when she was doing free shipping because I refuse to pay for shipping if I don't have to so I did pick this up on Sephora.com and it was released on 919. So I have had this for a while guys, but it is really hard for me to get reviews up really fast because I do like to test my palettes out as much as possible. I do want to try and wear every shade with this palette. I'm not going to lie. I was not able to wear every shade because honestly, a lot of these colors don't really speak to me on a spiritual level, but I did try to do my best and I am wearing an eye look that I created using this palette. Okay guys, now that I've talked a little bit about the palette, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a little demo of me putting this eye look together for you guys. Okay guys, so I just wanted to quickly do a little demo featuring the Saint and Sinner palette. I have been trying to use this palette as much as possible in the last couple of weeks. And I created a look the other day that I really liked featuring this top shade right here called Rapture. So I just thought I would recreate that for you. I always like to start off with a base so my eyes are prepped with MAC Soft Ochre. And then I'm just going to reach into Amen, which is this neutral shade right here. And then I'm just going to apply that on my lids. And I do have some bake on as well, just in case there is any fallout I wanted to catch. And then I'm just going to take a Morphe 441 brush and just blend. So 
So now that that's all blended, I'm gonna dip into a crease shade. I'm gonna go in with this one called Baptism. It's like a soft pink shade. I definitely don't have anything like it in my collection. It looks almost like white, but it's like a light, light, light baby pink shade. Okay, and then I wanna go in with this shade called Rosary, which is like a darker pink shade. I'm just gonna stick with the same brush and I'm gonna throw this in my crease as well. So I've told you guys before, I really like doing pink eye looks. I think it really complements my skin tone. I don't think I'll be wearing it too much here in the winter time, but I think a lot of the summer, I really enjoy doing pinks. And I think in the fall, I'll be doing more mauve type looks. So I feel like that's pretty well blended. I do kind of want to smoke out the outer V. So to do that, I'm just going to grab this Morphe. R39, which is a little bit more tapered, and I'm going to go into Crucifix um, in this palette. It's like a dark brown shade, and we're just going to place it here in the outer corner. So it gives it a little bit of smokiness. Now I'm going to go back in with the M441 and just kind of, you know, make sure I blend Crucifix in with rosary and I think I like that effect it gives it like a little bit of a dark look so next I want to use rapture and I really like to use a glitter glue with shades like this so what I've been doing is using the Too Faced glitter glue and I just put a little bit on my hand here and I take a synthetic brush and I'll just tap it on and then I'll just go for the lid and I'll try to like nicely coat my lid with the glitter glue by Too Faced. I really do like the Too Faced glitter glue. I've been using it a lot with these palettes. And then I'll take my little pinky finger and get a good amount on. And then I'll just press it onto my lid. And I've been using the glitter glue with the Pat McGrath shadows. I've been using it with the Huda palette it really you know intensifies these glitter shadows that i've been seeing in a lot of palettes now there's quite a bit of fallout but i did put some bake on under my eyes as well but do you see that it's a really beautiful shadow i really like this one so now we're going to do the other eye and <clears throat> again i'm just going to take a synthetic brush, put some glitter glue on the front of my hand. I try to do one eye at a time so the glue doesn't dry up. And I just take a nice generous amount and just kind of pat it all over my lid. Always make sure you try and get all the way into your crease so that you know it's nice and easy to adhere. And then I'm going into Rapture with my pinky now. Switching hands, of course, and I get a generous amount and pat that on with my pinky. It's a little bit hard to do because I do have my nails done, my acrylic, so it's really hard to get into that corner, but I make it work. So there, we got a nice amount of glitter, and I'm going back in with this brush and just making sure the crease is nice and blended and then I just want to put a little bit of there's a shade called absolution in the palette it's on the saint side I think that'll be a really pretty like inner corner highlight so I'm just putting some of that in there it's like a white shade but I've actually used this on my uh, lid and you, it's a beautiful topper as well. It turns in like this beautiful gold shade. So that's pretty much my little demo using the Kat Von D Saints and Center palette. I'm going to finish this look and be right back. So this is a limited edition palette. This is our holiday palette. 
and it was $62. Shipping was free because like I said, I did get it on Sephora.com. Um, the VIB sale and the Rouge sale and all that is coming up soon. So if you don't want to get this full price, I would recommend waiting a few more weeks and you should probably be able to get this on discount. I keep saying that in all my videos because I, I don't really have a discount code for you know, products like this, you don't really get a discount from Kat Von D very often. If you are on a budget, I would just recommend waiting for the sale. I don't think this is sold out, so it doesn't hurt to wait for a deal. This is what the packaging, the outer packaging looks like. This is the box, so it has that same cathedral window on the front, and then on the back, all the colors are laid out as well. Now, as far as the packaging goes, I do appreciate the aesthetic and the amount of effort she put into this. I definitely see the cathedral windows. I get the vibe she was going for. From a completely practical point of view, I feel like this packaging is very cumbersome. It's actually not as bad as this one. This is so long and obnoxious that it is really hard to store, even in a drawer. You know how you can like line up your palettes? This one is so long, it takes up like it's an entire drawer basically on its own. It's hard to store standing up because it doesn't really fit in a shelf. I don't know, it's just obnoxious. Like I get that she wants to make these like really unique. It's also kind of a pain in the ass sometimes and you really can't travel with these palettes because they're so odd looking and odd shaped. So they're not like easily gonna fit in makeup bags and things like that. This palette is made in Canada and the amount of product you get is basically there's 24 shades in here and each shade is one gram each. So you get quite a bit of product in here. As far as the information I found on shade selection and finishes, the Sephora website said that this was 24 pigment pack shades inspired by kaleidoscopic stained glass windows of old world Gothic cathedrals. Embrace your softer side with 12 saintly shades that are dreamy, wearable, and, and effortlessly romantic. And then you can unleash your inner sinner side with 12 bold color pops, empowering, unexpected, and instantly pigmented. So one side is the saint side, which is this side, and then this is the sinner side with the bold colors. I do think this would typically be suitable for all skin tones. Some of these shades, I think people are going to have a hard time finding like their perfect crease color and things like that. I can usually use like Marty and Devil in my crease and then Amen to set my complete lid. You'll see that in the demo as well. But I feel like if you're darker than me or lighter than me, you're going to have a hard time finding those basic shades. So I don't want to say this is completely unusable alone, but I think if you are lighter or darker, you might need to combine this with another palette that has like your perfect crease shade, your perfect brow bone. There's also no brow bone highlight in this palette. I would like to point that out like a shimmer one. If you're into kind of like those shimmer shimmer type shades, there's really not one in here for you for that. As far as the shelf life of this palette goes, Kat Von D, I don't know if it's because she's vegan and cruelty free. This one is nine months. This one is 12 months, the older one, but this one does have a shorter shelf life. So it could be because of the ingredients and things like that. I'm definitely no expert when it comes to the chemistry of putting makeup together, but if you're interested in something like that, I'm sure you can do some research and find out. But I have noticed in her palettes, the shelf life is not usually very long. Cruelty-free and vegan, her whole brand is cruelty-free and vegan. She's a huge advocate of cruelty-free makeup, which I do appreciate. Like I said previously, I did order this on September 19th and it arrived to my house on 921 because I have two-day flash shipping from sephora.com so I like to take advantage of that. As far as application goes I haven't had too much trouble. The shimmer shades do have a little bit of fallout. Now the thing to keep in mind with this palette guys is there's definitely different textures of shadows. You have some you know very nice jewel tone metallics right here. There are these like shades this revelations and exodus and ashes that have like a matte base but there is a lot of shimmer packed in there um, so I did a look with exodus in my crease and I did relic on my lid I will pop a picture of it so you guys can see it I didn't really see a lot of fallout from the shade exodus even though there is glitter packed in there I didn't really feel like it fell on my eyes relic wore really well today I'm wearing rosary and rapture these two are like top coat shades so if I swatch them for you they're not very very pigmented but they're packed 
with a lot of shimmer. So if you use a glitter glue, you can get some really, really beautiful pigmentation with these. And then there's just like the straight up metallic shades that are very, very buttery. These aren't the formula that's in these, the metal, uh, the metal eyeshadows or whatever those are called that people love. They sell them in the singles. These aren't that same formula. So I don't know why she has all these different kinds of formulas. It is very confusing to me. And uh, some of these formulas I don't really love. Some of the colors I don't really love. It's like, mm, I don't really know like when I'm gonna wear a shade like Immaculate. Like it's a very beautiful green, olive green shade, but I just don't know how to pair that on my eyes and like what to pair that with. Um, I think this shade Cathedral is a beautiful shade, but again, like it's hard for me to look at this and like envision eye looks. I feel like this is a very creative editorial palette and I don't see people using this every day. So if you're kind of on the hunt for like an everyday palette, I don't know that I would recommend this to you. But as far as application, keep in mind there's a lot of different textures in this palette so if you're not very comfortable with working with metallics and satin type shadows and like mattes and metals, you know, you're gonna need to do some educating on yourself before you go in with this palette because it's not just like mattes and a shimmer shade. There's different textures on here and to get this palette to perform to its full potential you're kind of going to want to know what you're doing. As far as wear time, I haven't had any problems. I feel like these wear for a reasonable amount of time. I usually always do my makeup at like 6 a.m. and I have my makeup makeup on pretty much till I take a shower and go to bed, which is around, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night. So I definitely feel like these have decent wear time. As far as swatches go, I've already swatched this entire palette in a different video. So I will link that up in the cards for you guys if you are interested in seeing swatches. Now, as far as the million dollar question of would I recommend this palette, I still don't really have a definitive answer. I definitely like this palette a lot more than the Metal Matte palette. This was a very cool tone palette. I really don't know what drove me to buy this other than the fact that I was still really sad about not picking up the Mimita Loca palette. This Saint and Sinner palette is like the Mimita Loca palette and the Metal Matte palette had a baby because it has those like vibrant shades as well as those like cool tone shades. So she really built a palette that kind of had everything. If you didn't get the previous two palettes and you are a Kat Von D fan, I think you will really enjoy this. But if you are looking for something simplistic and everyday, I really don't think this is a palette for you. If you're looking for something like that, I would definitely recommend like the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette any of the naked palettes, something very simple. This is going to be something where you're a collector, you're definitely a little bit more into makeup than the average person, and the price point I think is a little bit high too. So these are all the things I want you to keep in mind when you're looking at this palette as far as purchasing it goes. Overall, I think it is a beautiful palette. I am happy to have it in my collection. I don't know how much use I'm going to get from this. I am going to keep it for now. I will update you guys if I decide to return it. Right now, I don't have any plans on returning it because I do think the pigmentation is really up to par. It definitely looks better on your eyes than even when I swatch it. I think it's beautiful. I love this combo that I have on my eyelids right now. So definitely recommend this palette if you are a makeup enthusiast. Okay guys, that is everything I wanted to talk about with the Saint and Sinner palette. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys soon. Bye.